Hi, this is the third step in a five-part series for people who are new to Postman. Welcome! In this video, we're going to write a Postman test. For a lot of people, Postman is synonymous with API testing. For some, testing might mean sending and inspecting a response like we did earlier. Testing might also mean writing assertions to make sure an endpoint is returning the correct responses. Testing can also mean replicating your actual workflow with realistic test cases. And at the most advanced levels, we're talking full-blown automation. Running test suites is part of your continuous integration and build process. I should also mention that writing test, Postman tests is a marketable skill. For a lot of testers and developers, testing their endpoints to make sure their correct responses are returned can save a lot of time in avoiding costly mistakes in production, and is frequently listed as a desired qualification in job postings. In this video, we'll get our feet wet and write a few simple Postman tests. Let's get started. Make sure you're not using the Postman Chrome app, which is deprecated. You should be using the packaged app for Mac, Windows, or Linux. For this series, I'm using the Postman standalone app for Mac OS X. I'm on version 6. Make sure you have a Postman account and you're logged in. For this example, we'll revisit a request that we set up earlier using the Google Maps geocoding API. This is the endpoint that geocodes a street address into geographic coordinates like longitude and latitude. Click the params button to expand the editor. Remember, we're using environment variables with the double curly braces syntax to access values stored in our local environment. And if we hit send, we can check out the response down below. Under the body tab, let's inspect the response body. We see a 200 response code, uh, the, two, the time it took to run the request, and so on. Okay, this looks good to me. Um, this is what a response should look like. Let's go back up to the top where we built our request. There's two tabs that we haven't talked about yet, the pre-request script and tests tabs. These are both scripting areas where you can write JavaScript that executes either before or after the primary request is sent. This is a great place to do setup and teardown, do calculations or execute any other logic that you want to do either before or after the request. So pre-request executes before and tests executes after the main request. Let's dig into test scripts. So in Postman, when you send a request, you have access to the response object that's returned. So under the test tab, where you can write any kind of JavaScript, it makes sense that you can test for assertions about the response object. Like, I think this response object is JSON. The response code is 200. It includes whatever arguments or whatever values and so on. The easiest way to get started with writing tests in Postman is to look at the snippets on the right side of the test tab. Scroll down and click status code, code is 200. Clicking the snippet will append the JavaScript code into the editor. Let's take a closer look. This is a test in Postman. It uses Postman's pm.star API. You can see that the pm.test method takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the test. This should be something that's meaningful to you when it passes or fails. The second parameter is a function that will evaluate to true or false, resulting in a passing or failing test. Inside this function, you can see that we're using the good old pm.star API, along with a syntax borrowed from chai.js. It's kind of pleasant to read. If you want to dig deeper into writing tests and assertions, look up the fluent chai syntax. So let's hit send, and on the bottom part with the response, you can see the result of this test. The function was evaluated as true, 200 response, so this test passed. Let's write another test, and this time from scratch, back up to the top. Since we already know what the response should look like, let's write a test so that if we get back something else, we know something's wrong, or not what we expected, and that would be a failed test. So start with pm.test. The first parameter is the name of the test. Let's say response includes results. The second parameter is a function that will evaluate to true or false. Inside this function, let's use pm.expect. Let's expect that the response, or pm.response, um, and I want to parse the body as JSON, so add .json, and our response should include an array of results, so add to include keys, and the name of the key is results. We can add more pm.expect statements here, and if any of them evaluate to false, this test called response includes results will fail. All right, hit send again. And now when we look at the bottom under test results, we can see two tests ran and both passed. If you find yourself using the same tests over and over again, 
Remember, you can also add a test to the entire collection or folder if you want the same test to run after every request in the collection or folder. At this point, we can take it further and parse the response to extract data and chain together this response to drive our next request. Keep watching to find out how. So we talked about the pre-request and test tabs as places for scripting using plain old vanilla JavaScript. We created a boilerplate test using one of the snippets in the sidebar. We wrote a test from scratch using the pm.star API and then looked at the test results in the response viewer. Lastly, besides writing a test for a single request, you can add a test to a collection or folder so that it runs after every request in that collection or folder. Geez, that was a lot. Now's a good time to try it out on your own and make sure you're comfortable writing tests under the test tab. Spend a few minutes on your own doing that, and then it's time to charge ahead.